Yeah. Deanna, welcome. Oh, I can hear your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? Oh, I'll try not to be inappropriate with it. I'll put it down here, <laughs> not put it close to the face. I'm great. I'm just happy to see you guys. So, man, you're in a good mood. You're like cracking maybe inappropriate jokes. I don't know. This is a great, they great were way to start things off. Can't bring this down here. Uh, and the sun comes out and then it just starts going down my throat. And then it's like, it's oh my here. God. I don't even, I'm this not even sure how. This what, is the, oh, to a good start what the hell guys. just happened? I don't even think this is my fault. This stuff kind of usually is my fault. Not, I, I didn't do anything just for the record. It's my fault. I mean, my fight name is vitamin D for a reason. And it's not because of my cheery personality. As much as I like to tell people that's the case. It's really not. It's because I literally just two seconds up here and I'm like, so I deep throat the microphone now, right? <laughs> it's like, hi. Oh my God. <laughs> you and I are going viral somehow later today. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Hey, look, let's, uh, let's bring yeah. this back to I'm the safe go zone. This and then everyone forgets and then we can save zone. Let's talk about the and I have dad up here and you heard all that. And that's really awkward. Let's talk about the prep work yes. for this one. Um, how how camp was, and and uh, you, you're fighting somebody you obviously fought before. Yes, looking to avenge one. Absolutely. Um, so, what goes into play in in a training camp like that when you know you got to you know get one back from somebody? Um, you know, you have to take each fight independently. Obviously, it's been a couple of years, and I'm a different fighter. She's a different fighter. I'm at a completely different camp now out in Philly with Marquez MMA, um, and the adjoining teams for that. And but it's like you have to obviously go back and look at the first fight and kind of see what you did right, what she did right, what I did wrong, maybe keeping my body intact and not ripping my leg in his two, you know, what she didn't do. It just happened. <laughs> the thing, I'd show you the scar, but I'm wearing pants, which was intentional because I would show you the scar if I wasn't wearing full pants right now. And we're not going to do that whole thing. We're trying to be appropriate for the rest of this, but exactly. like you have to, it's, it, I knew I would see her again. Um, I, I knew she would be champion. And so I felt like it would be for the title. So I hoped that when I had brought myself back up to the spot where I can be in title contention, I hoped that she still had the title at that point. Cause I knew she was already going to be the champion. Cause she's such a great fighter. Um, and you know, my, my hopes paid off cause she's still the champion. And so our rematch is, is for the title. And I, I, my face says everything. Like, I'm so incredibly excited for this. Like I'm a weirdo and just happy in general as it is, but like, I, I can't stop smiling just because the opportunity is, is finally here. And it's not a weight cut thing where my face is sunken in. I'm just, I, I can't shut my mouth because I'm just happy. So you, um, you kind of have a, a chance to, let's just call it upset the apple cart. Right. Okay. So if she, if she wins, and Alima wins. I think the consensus is, oh my God, we've got this perfect storyline. Alima is going to fight her for the title. And Alima has spoken about, you know, if I get another title shot, I might, I would love to win the title. And she's implied that maybe she would just retire in the cage after that. Yeah. It's a great storyline. It'd be fun for everybody to talk about, but you have a chance to screw that up for everybody and really throw a wrench into the works and, and mess up the timeline. Is there something that's motivating about that uh, beyond just the fact that you're trying to avenge a loss and win a title and become a champion? I mean, to be an agent of chaos and just completely uproot the apple carts and everything. I love that. <laughs> it's still a little bit of chaos. That's how I live my life. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm, I mean, that's not my main motivation. You know, it's never that I want to ruin anyone else's party and ruin anyone else's storyline. It's just, I just have clear goals in this sport and what I want to do. And so if it disrupts somebody else's story to get to that, then that unfortunately has to be the case. You know, I, I don't wish well, uh, wish unwell. <laughs> Let me rephrase that before I finish the sentence. I don't wish unwell for anyone else. And, you know, it would be a great storyline for Alima to fight again for the title and then win that title. You know, she was a dominant champ for a really long time. Um, but unfortunately, I have goals that I want to accomplish and that I set my sights on for a really long time that every day I get up and I've been working for it on my motivation mirror, my the post-it I put on there. It was actually when I got signed with Bellator, I put, I don't know if anyone knows the Goggins motivational mirror thing. It's like the mirror that I look for, into and get ready every day. I put my, my goals on there. I have long-term goals. I have short-term goals. And the two main ones for me were get my jujitsu black belt and win the Bellator flyweight title. And not just win a flyweight title, it's win the Bellator flyweight title. 
and it's been on there for the last few years and I have the opportunity to, to win that and to achieve that goal on Friday. Mm. And so I'm, I'm coming there for that. And then, you know, unfortunately, you know, maybe she doesn't get to fight for against her friend, but Hey, I'll take that fight. I think I've called for it one or two times just because like I said, I, I want to fight tough competitors and she was a dominant champ for a long time. I have no ill will against her. I think she's great. Um, I don't know what she thinks about me, but most people just think I'm weird as it is. I think I've proved that to the entire room in two seconds of being up here. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll fight her. I mean, she might not retire as champ, but I give her the opportunity to fight for a championship again. <laughs> weird, weird is way more interesting. Trust yes. me. Um, I go with quirky. That there you one's, go. Like sounds more positive, whether that's the case or not. It sounds more positive in my head. So I'll take it. <laughs> so, so essentially uh, you respect their storylines, but you're kind of thinking what's wrong with my storyline. I have a good storyline too. Why should yours be more important than mine? Exactly. And everybody else, you know, the rest of the world will find out when I win the title. Is yep. that, is it that kind of thinking? Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, as much as I, I, I love that story for her, I'm, I have my goals and I have my storyline, you know, I've been in the sport for a really long time and I want a belt. Like I'm not saying the R word because it's not even in, I feel the best that I ever have right now. And so I don't want to, um, I don't even want to mention that for the time being, but like, I have goals that I set for myself in this sport and I'm going to, I want to accomplish them. And the bell tour flyweight title is on that list. And so I'm, I'm coming here for it. Deanna, I, I was kind of surprised to see, you know, the betting line so wide and maybe wanted to ask you, like, do, do people not realize how experienced you are and, and the skills that you've shown? Because I, I don't know, you speak for yourself, obviously, but I don't know if you always get that respect for both your experience and skills. Can you speak on that? Um, yeah. So like pulling a full, was it Rod, Rodney Dangerfield, like get no respect. <laughs> just no respect. And honestly, I, it's, I'm not even phased by it. Like I don't ever expect anyone to know who I am. I don't like, and my manager and everybody are like, you need to do more self-promotion. I'm like, yeah, you see what happens when I do self-promotion. I try and deep throat the microphone. I, uh, my coach just walked in and he did not actually see the first part of that. So that probably sounds really weird. I'm sorry to be associated with your gym. Um, <laughs> love you guys. Um, but I mean, if you don't, they're, they're always like, you need to do more self-promotion. You need to put yourself out there. And it's like, it's just this extra little step. And it's like, yeah, of course I want to do that. But my focus has been training. My focus has been fighting and proving myself in the cage. And I, I could be better with it. And I guess, I don't know, I'll take a few ass pictures and put it on Instagram. I have no ass. That's why you haven't seen it on there. Cause even if I post it, you're like, I'm not sure. What is that flat thing? I'm like, well, <laughs> Yeah, that's mine. Well, there's always those, you know, marketable improvements that we can speak of, but the important ones obviously are in the cage. And you spoke about injuries before, you know, you had the hamstring with Liz. You even suffered an injury in your last fight uh, and you were still able to pull out the W, which was great. But let me ask you, you know, we're not mentioning the R word or anything like that, but men and women, as you know, as time goes in the sport, they tend to have that saying training smarter, not harder mm -hmm. in relation to the injuries in particular. Obviously, you have experience with this stuff. Are you embracing any of that ethos in your training? Um, no, because I'm dumb as a rock. So I'm like, I show up every day. I'm like, we're going to war. This is the Thunderdome. Who's going in there with me? And they're like, this is why you have no one to train with Deanna. Cause nobody wants to do that. Um, but I, I love pushing myself every day. You know, injuries are a part of the sport. I felt it from the very beginning, like going through the list of things you are like, well, this doesn't have a ligament. This doesn't have a ligament. This one hurts. I've broken that a few times. And it's like, but it's all worth it to me, honestly, like every little injury you get, like it sucks, but you find a way to keep going. And, you know, obviously you have to train smart. You, you don't want to go out there and just like completely demolish your body because then you'll never make it to the cage. So you, you have to be smart and you have to train with people that you trust. And thankfully I, I do have that, you know, I have a, a great team and training partners that, that I trust. And then the ones that I don't, I sick my other teammates on them and teach them a lesson. So it's the way it works, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Last one for me, obviously you spoke about your training Marquez MMA, their affiliation with Daniel Gracie, and I'm sure uh, having all the strong grapplers and MMA influence there mm -hmm. will be helpful for this matchup. But let me ask you before you injured your hamstring, there was a little bit of that matchup uh, where you were uninjured. Everyone speaks about Carmouche's strength. You're obviously, you come from a wrestling uh, base yourself. You're no slouch there. 
Can you tell us what the feedback was prior to the injury? How did she feel to you? And uh, do you, do you, do, did you get and take anything positive from that? Um, so I, she, she obviously is very strong. Look at her. She's very strong. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be PC really fast. And I'm going to say farm strength. I have farm strength, not the alternative that I want to say farm strength, I'm not getting canceled today. Um, so I, I have that in, in me and that's what everyone says. They're like, um, excuse me. Like, I don't understand. And one of my old teammates, he was a heavyweight and he's like, how in the world do you as a flyweight hold me down? And I was like, farm strength, <laughs> that's the one. And he's like, well, that fits. And I'm like, it does. If you're using the real terms that I want to use. Um, but I just, and so I, I felt like I was a good matchup with that. You know, that fight was going well. And I wish my coach didn't tell me the scorecards afterwards. We got back from the hospital and he, he told me what the scorecards were. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? He's like, it's good news. And I was like, no, cause I still lost. And my hamstring is ripped off the bone. No, it's not good news. It doesn't matter. Like the scorecards don't matter. Cause my hand wasn't raised, but I, I know what I did in that fight. And I, I proved a little bit of myself and, you know, people take it at face value because if they didn't see the fight, then they just see the results of it. And it's a loss on my record. And so I'm cool. If they want to think that, and if they want the betting records to be that cool, I'll make some people some money when they bet on me. So that's the one. <laughs> hey, Deanna, Kay Williams for Kent right here. Oh, hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? Say, I know that voice, but I was like, <laughs> how are you? I don't know how I missed you in the shirt. It's fabulous, by the way. Thank very you. I appreciate that. that. Really appreciate that. Um, so you have another chance at a very tough Liz Carmouche. Yeah. Let's talk about both the mental elevation and the physical elevation in preparation for this match. Yes. Um, so physical preparation is just making sure that I'm the best fighter that I can be, you know, doing every aspect. You have to do your your training in every in every discipline of the sport. You have to do, you know, your strength and conditioning, your cardio, your rest. That's the one I struggle with the most because I'm always like, let's go. And they're like, you, you actually have to sleep and actually have to take like some light practices. And um, so that was the the big one. And just knowing the fight so far out, trying to like pace my camp because like I found out I have the fight and I'm like, this is the one I've been waiting for for years. And so I'm like, let's go. And you're like, you have three months, calm down. I don't do well. Never tell a female to calm down ever. You will get murdered in your sleep. So thankfully I was, I calmed myself down on that one. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just the, the mental aspect of it. You know, I don't know if you picked up on this. I think I might be back shit crazy. Um, but it plays in the cage because it, it makes me want this so much more. And I, I have to just kind of focus it and, you know, stay disciplined in that aspect. And I have my, my friend and training partner in corner and I throw a therapist in front of his name every once in a while. Cause I'm like, just, you know, you're not just my coach. You're not just the person that I wrestle with and try to get the shit out of first thing in the morning. Like you're going to be my therapist too. And so thankfully he put that hat on and talked to me through, through a few things. And so just trying to keep the right people around you is, is the biggest thing, you know, the right training partners, the right coaches, the right, um, friends, everything, and getting rid of all the negativity. Um, that's been the, the biggest part of the whole thing. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm here, I have a smile on my face. I'm ready to go. I feel good. And so I'm excited. <laughs> Deanna, thank you for your time. Thank you. Always a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> thank you, Deanna. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm good. Cool. Thank you. I'm going to put this down before I